This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, John's got a first look at Windows 7, plus the latest in gadget tech news. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Web TV. Now here's John with a first look at Windows' new operating system, Windows 7. It's not due to hit the market till the end of this year, but Microsoft recently made available a beta version of its new Windows 7 operating system. Now, in case you don't know, a beta version is essentially a prototype version of the software that has a few bugs in it, but nevertheless will enable you to get a feel for what it's like. It's the successor to the rather unpopular Vista, which is unpopular for a couple of reasons, really. First of all, it's very bloated, so it makes even a fast computer run quite slowly, in particular taking ages to boot up. Secondly, at least when it came out, it had a lot of compatibility issues. Some hardware wouldn't work with it and quite a lot of software as well. That's been partly resolved, but not entirely. So I was quite keen to uh, download Windows 7 and see what it's like, and I actually installed it as a dual boot with Vista on a machine that's just about powerful enough to run Vista. It's got a gigabyte of RAM, a reasonably quick dual core processor to see whether the new operating system would make any difference. And first impressions are that Windows 7 is indeed quicker than Vista. I've just got a few applications on this computer, a basic antivirus program, a photo editor and an office suite. And with Vista it takes 2 minutes 20 seconds to fully boot up. With Windows 7 it's around a minute. Once you're up and running it seems to be quicker too. Applications open more quickly. If I open an office writer for example it takes just 10 seconds. With Vista it's more like 20-25 seconds. Copying things onto a USB drive that's quicker too. Too, typically around 40 to 50 percent quicker. So it all suggests that uh, Windows 7 concentrates on the core tasks in hand and there's less sort of nonsense going around in the background to slow you up. As for the interface itself, well it's more of a facelift rather than a revolution. The icons on the taskbar have been revamped. If you hover your mouse over them, for example, you see all the windows that are open in that particular application, which is useful. Hover your mouse again and you can select the website you want to view. You can shake the top of a window and all other windows will disappear. Shake it again and they'll come back. There's a pane at the end of the taskbar which, if you hover over that, makes all the windows transparent and you can see your desktop. An interesting, if minor, feature. It's also got a home groups feature so you can uh, actually link together more easily lots of Windows 7 machines around your house, which could be useful. There's also jump lists which appear to the right of any programs you've got on your taskbar, highlighting sort of common tasks that you might want to perform with those programs. It does depend on the author of the software actually writing uh, those jump lists. WordPad, for example, you can see a list of your recently opened documents, although some of these applications like WordPad, although they've got a bit of a new look, uh, they are still depressingly lacking in features. I can't see you using WordPad, for example, when there are so many other word processors available. Some of the uh, of Microsoft's rather underwhelming applications have actually disappeared altogether. You no longer get the photo gallery or the movie maker, although you can download them from Microsoft's website free of charge if you want them. I guess it's all part of making Windows simpler. Compatibility is much harder to test, obviously. I mean, I found some bits of hardware were recognised, things like uh, my external hard drive and various USB drives. On the other hand, I found a USB modem wouldn't work and I couldn't get any drivers for it. Obviously, it's early days. I think we have to give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt. Unfortunately, beta downloads of Windows 7 have now stopped and any existing downloads will stop working on August the 1st. The important thing is, though, that I think Microsoft have finally learnt the lesson. Operating systems can be leaner and more efficient. And if you're in the market for a new PC, I think it's well worth waiting until Windows 7 comes out, or indeed until Vista machines appear with an upgrade voucher that allow you to upgrade to Windows 7 free of charge. Right, now it's time for the news. Now, if you're a fan of rock band and you love the Beatles, then you'll be happy to hear that later this year you can get your hands on rock band The Beatles. Yes, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and Wii owners will all be able to enjoy their favourite tracks and journey through the band's legendary career. And for those hardcore Beatles fans out there, you'll be able to enjoy new Beatles hardware modelled on instruments used by the band members themselves. 
Now, it'll be offered as both a limited edition bundle and standalone software, and it'll be compatible with all Rock Band instrument controllers. It'll be available worldwide from September, but UK prices are still to be announced. Now, it appears that Dell have decided to jump on the slim notebook bandwagon and have unveiled their Adamo laptop. Now, as you can see, it looks really thin, and it is only 1.7 centimeters thick, making it one of the thinnest laptops available on the market. It's got a 13.4 inch, 16 by nine high definition display with edge to edge glass. Now the top model comes with the latest 128 gigabyte solid state drive, a very moderate 1.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo processor and four gigabytes DDR3 dual channel memory. And apparently the battery life will give you five hours or more. It's available in the US from the end of March, but a UK release date and price are still to be announced. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back at the same time next week. And don't forget, you can get regular updates of what we're doing by following us on Twitter. Bye for now.